what's up guys welcome back to the HVAC game we are here today replacing this captive air exhaust fan motor it was failing we confirmed with tech support the PWM signal to have the ECM motor running is arriving but the motor is failing mechanically we got a new one over here captive air look at this beauty this is our 120 volts coming in and then we have a plug here I have to look how it's inside there, but some of this is our control wires telling the motor to run and how fast to go. It's a zero to 24 volts input signal that will tell this how fast to go. All right, let's do this. First things first, you always want to turn off power. These ones are free, these plugs usually. And since we have to open all of this anyway, well, 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 I feel like a woman going through my purse have non-contact voltmeter just test it it's nothing obviously you can use this as well a lot of people prefer checking with an actual meter on the leads to make sure there is no power you can do that too let's put it on voltage check here on kitchen stuff i either wear my gloves or i wear Disposable, usually I wear disposable just because of all the grease. Going through this, I noticed, I opened this up and I was like, how does this come out? And I noticed I've never done these before, so I don't wanna mess it up. Thanks to Ruben, thanks Ruben. <laughs> I watched his video to see how he replaced this one and uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Let me show you. You have a hub down there, you undo these set screws. You undo these mounting screws, obviously undo the electrical, then you can pull this out. I'm gonna get my rust penetrant, but apparently if this gets stuck, it's very hard to get out, so I'm gonna clean out the shaft and put some rust penetrant, just in case. Usually I find on these kitchen motors, there's so much grease that they're good and lubricated, but you know, never know. Take some of this, just spray it on there. No, just let it soak. Let's see, let's clean it up a little bit. Just so you can see this. So you have these set screws. These ones you have to tighten. That is half inch and this one is three eighths. Apparently that's the entire thing of what you have to do. It is a half inch. The set screw itself is 3 8 Okay, that came loose. Now we have to undo this. I think that's 3 8 I'm just gonna spray a little bit on this just to make sure that they're coming out. Let's see, is it 3 8 Yep, it is. Pretty easy. We can also probably use our impact. This attachment, by the way, I mean, I have the Klein, but really every major manufacturer makes this now. You have all of the different attachments. You just move them back and forth like this. This is 3 8 Very, very handy tool. Even though I lost a few of them already, <laughs> I just keep buying them. That's all of them. Usually I do the electrical first. Let's take a picture of this so we remember. So the red, this one is our PWM signal. This is zero to 24 volts DC and you can measure that. And what is happening, this was putting out 19 volts, but then when the motor was trying to run, it would reduce it to 11. It was telling me that the motor was trying to run, but it wasn't actually spinning. So that's how you can confirm that. And this is usually from a control panel downstairs. It is, DC, so you have to mount it correctly. This is our neutral. It's uh, 115 volts on this one. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I don't actually know if you like seeing all the intricate steps or if you rather I fast forward stuff. I never know because I personally don't like watching all the minute details. Once I know the procedure, for me it's fine if people skip forward in their videos but you know everybody's different so i always try to get feedback 
Here we go. Let's see if it actually goes. Oh, yeah, it comes out. Nice. Oh, uh, that was a lot simpler than I thought it would be. Okay, so this is our motor. Wow, that was so easy. As you can tell, here is our old motor, our new motor. And it has this mounting plate here. Since I already have it, why not use it? You can see here our connectors are cut. So it's the red and the yellow that's cut. And red to red and then black to yellow inside. This is probably our 3 8 again. Since I've worked a lot on maintenance, like I come from a maintenance background, I was, I've had so bad motors because I was in Florida. I always found that these rust so badly that it's always best to use this in the beginning. And then once it's loose, you can use whatever gun or so you have. But here in Texas, I haven't found stuff going bad that much, like rust. Because I was working in the Tampa Bay, larger Tampa Bay area, Clearwater area. And I was right by the ocean. So you have salt, you have humidity, you have sand, and just everything rusts all the time. So our bearings are trash. I'm just cleaning it off. Let's undo this stuff. Yeah, you know, guys, if you if you like these kind of videos, consider joining the HRAC Game School community. If you're already in the community, good on you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we have a lot of stuff in there, a lot of videos, in-depth, troubleshooting, system component basics. And I always say, I mean, I don't know, I don't know everything, but HREC is like a learning journey. Like you learn something new every day. Like today I was like, okay, I'm just replacing a motor. I've replaced motors in the past, but then I'm like, oh, I haven't done this. So that's why there's so many resources online so you can find everything. And I'm building out the community. I have courses I update every week. We have uh, regular live calls in there. At the time of this recording, there's 170 people in the community, all technicians from all different experience levels, starting out, not even having the license, just barely got their license. To me, I'm in the trades for 10 to 10, no, 11 years. And we have some people that are in there eight, some people like, 20, 30, one guy is 30 years in the trades. I can't, I can't believe it. One guy is 23 years. He's actually a um, trade school instructor. He's in there too. And there's business owners, like HVAC business owners. There's like, there's so many different people and everyone just is there to help each other out, you know? So if you have questions, you can post stuff in the community and get feedback. Anyways, just throwing it out there. Now we're done here. As you can tell, our wheel is not centered anymore. It's obviously it fell down. So what I'm gonna do is I'll move this down like so. I think I'll probably have to mount the motor and then tilt it up and then center the wheel. I can center it, but it's just down, so it won't reach. Ah, there we go. I guess these are like some air holes or something to help the motor cool down. And that's why they fail because it's so obstructed. Alrighty. I don't even know if I can do this one handed. This was here like so. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think this is catching anything. Yeah, so there's so much engagement in the community. It's really great to see people just helping each other out. And that's really why I started it, because in the beginning I had a hard time learning. In the first like one to three years, it was really rough. And also when I asked questions, I wouldn't get them answered. And I tried asking on Facebook groups and there's so much trash talk there. So I really wanted to develop a resource for mostly new technicians starting out where you can just ask questions and get feedback. But it turns out that I guess I'm not the only one noticing that and wanting to learn and wanting to share experiences. So there's a lot of people joining. So yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, go ahead, check it out. And also if you're enjoying this video, if it helps you, give it a thumbs up, give me a follow. Maybe you can do it to support, that would be awesome. I really appreciate it.
As you can tell, the wheel is not on there. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but you have the flat surface here and here. So this is where my set screws are. And I'm honestly trying to keep this on here. It's a little bit hard to do this. This was almost all the way at the end, so I'll make sure that it is similar. It's almost half inch. So I'm just going to tighten it a little bit. I'm going to spin it and see if it grinds. Nothing grinding, so let's tighten it fully. Just double checking. I'm actually on the flat part. Okay, now this is tight. Now we're tightening the other screw. How is this screw called, by the way? The second screw here? Because this one is a set screw, so this is the set screw for the set screw, or what? <laughs> okay, that should be good. And last but not least, we have our electrical. I always recommend investing in good electrical tools. I really like these client tools, and they're designed for electricians, so they should probably be good. Well, they better be good. I'm gonna probably attach the terminal on the ground. That's pretty straightforward, you just strip it. So in so awkward working like this. Let's try and step on here. Easier. And on this one we actually got lucky because it was just barely within warranty. I think it was like three weeks to the end of the warranty and the motor failed so it's good that they called it in right away and we could look at it get it taken care of so here they just cut the red and the yellow the red and the yellow were cut and then red went to red and yellow went to black and oh yeah if you were still watching this thank you for watching the entire video but if you can leave in the comment below because i usually do subtitles for my videos but I know YouTube has their own subtitles. So do you like subtitles in the videos or you don't like it? Just let me know in the comments. Now I'm just gonna get a little terminal for this and install it. We should be good, I can power it up. I always have a bunch of these just on the bottom of my tool bag. I can just dig through. This one is what I use for crimping. It has a non-insulated and insulated. Obviously you can use the back of this, but I just don't like it because it's very hard to get in there many times. So and then you just put it on insulated like this and squeeze. And I always pull to make sure that it's all good. We have to get our ground in there. Get in there, you ma. Okay. Really? Really? You wanna be like this? You wanna be like this, huh? It's like in the videos, it always looks so easy. And then when you actually do it, it's like so annoying. <laughs> oh my god. The online world versus reality. Everybody makes everything look so easy. Okay, so. This is one, one in there. One, why? Why you have to be so freaking stubborn now? Stubborn. And you go in there as well, bro. Let's go one, two, next to each other. Okay, all of you wires. Go in there, our fitting, and now comes the final test. Now comes the moment of truth. Oh, I was like, I was scared. <laughs> no, but it's turning on. Yeah, you can hear it, no? Nice, I love it, I love it. Another job well done forgot last step is just do an amps test measure your amps draw just to confirm also take a picture of that to 
show your customer and then we're all good.